What's it like to be on a show like Vita that really, you know, hits hard with the diverse voices, especially for uh, Latina females? The good thing about being on a show like Vida is that we're getting to take control of our own narrative. And it seems crazy that that's crazy and that that's such a big deal because why would you not be able to tell your story? So there's something really special and powerful that we're getting to be a part of, and hopefully we're not the only show that's doing that. Hopefully we're just kind of creeping the door open so that more shows um, and media can really follow that lead. Well, that's awesome. Are you from the Los Angeles area, so are you able to draw on any of the experiences here? Well, I live here now, and I've lived here for a long time, um, but I'm not. I'm actually from Miami, from Hialeah, which has a similar vibe in the sense that it's a very Latin neighborhood. And, um, yeah, so there's been a lot of crossing over, and then also just that feeling of leaving home and coming back and thinking that you've outgrown something, and parts of you have, but there's a parts that you can't abandon. So I think that that's the cool thing to be a part of. Yeah, and I like that you said there's parts of you that are never, you know, going to grow out of it. Like, are there any personal stories you'd love to share, like, you know, that kind of really geared you up for that? Because I know Miami and uh, Los Angeles have very different Latin communities. Yeah, definitely. I think um, one of the things that I didn't realize that left me was my Miami accent. So I think being in theater, doing theater in high school and then doing shows, you're, you speak a little bit more neutrally. And when I go back, I definitely, they make fun of me a lot <laughs> for not speaking more like a Miami girl. And I also once called a, coquet, a croqueta a croquette. And I will never, ever, ever live that down. That's funny. And people shame me for all sorts of things. I know I'm from East Texas and I don't talk like this. So like yeah. I, I get called out all the time too. So um, are you able to really find yourself in this particular character or is it more just the story that resonates with you? I think all of it really, really resonates. I mean, with any character that you do, you have to find the parts of you that you're the same. And you align yourself and then you build the character from, from that out. And I think actually, in a lot of ways, this character's taught me a lot about what it's like to take up space and not apologize. Um, and so I, even though I am different than Emma in my day-to-day -day life, there's, there is parts that I do feel the same, parts that I feel like I need to protect and they get to use those. Well, cool. So what can we expect for Emma in season two? You see Emma at the end of season one mm -hmm. choosing to accept the past and really deal with it, essentially, which is manifested in this crumbling building and her sister. And you see her and Lynn truly give it a try. But Emma has created a life where she's an island. She's not used to having to work with anybody and is not used to having to answer to anybody. She's crafted her life very specifically that way. So we're going to see it's a lot more difficult than she thinks it's going to be. Well, for sure. It always is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, you wouldn't grow if it wasn't. So, yeah. All right. Well, I like that. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you.